Hey guys, welcome to a new release of our exclusive extra content for a free Flask tutorial. Go check it out if you haven't already. Free Flask tutorial, go to flasktutorial.com and you will see it. You will have extra and instance access to it. So today what we're going to see is how to deploy a Flask application to Heroku, all right, to the cloud using the free tire of Heroku. So at the end of this tutorial, you will have your own Flask application deployed for free on the Heroku platform using a free database from PostgreSDB. All right, so it's super simple. It's just take five minutes. You will see all in this tutorial. So throughout this tutorial, we'll be following this repo that contains the code for our Flask application. It's a simple application that will deal and perform a simple query to, the, to a database so you guys can see how everything works together in our final deployed application. So again, this is a repo. There is a link in this video. You can see the steps here also for, I don't know, further details. And we're going to get started. First, I'm going to show you how the Heroku uh, interface looks like when you are logged in. So you will have to create an, a simple account and then you will see something like this. I have here all the applications that I have already deployed. You, of course, will see pretty much nothing if this is the first time you create your account. In this example, this is another application that I have deployed, another Flask application. It's actually the same one, but it's another instance of the same application deployed. And this is what you guys will see at the end, right? This is how your application is going to look like. You will see all your deploys. You will see the services that we are using. In this case, it's the Heroku Postgres uh, service and then this is the actual deployed application right so if you go to open up it's going to open this flask application it's just listing a few countries as you can see there that we are querying from the database is the simple functionality that we have done and the important part here is how this deploy process works and how we create these applications. So again, we can have many different applications created to Heroku and maybe they will be hosting the same source code. All right. In this case, we will start all the process again. So you will see one of these created from scratch. Um, there is something to follow here. You will see this name and this number that it's a uh, way Heroku has to assign a name to your application. You can choose your own name if you want. And in this case, what we're going to see is then that the domain that we have received from Heroku is actually using that name. Of course, you will be able to set up your own domains. And if you pay just, I think it's $7 you can get a, a SSL connection, a HTTPS connection in your own domain, which is pretty cool. So let's get started. I'm going to show you step by step how to have your application deployed. Throughout this process to interact with our Heroku app, we will be using two main tools. The first one is what it's known as the Heroku command line interface program or Heroku tool belt. All right. It's a simple command line program that you can just install with one line in pretty much every platform and it will have, it will give you access from your computer to the actual application that you have deployed. Of course, we will also be using the uh, administrator dashboard from Heroku. So once you have these Heroku tool bit installed, you will see it. I'm going to show you an example right here, Heroku minus minus help, that it's actually working. The next step will be to log in, of course, to have your credentials assigned to this tool belt. So whenever you are interacting with your Heroku application, it will be, of course, uh, with your credential, right? You will not working with another account. The when when you create applications on Heroku, what it's going to happen is that you will generate these sort of instances that will live independently. So you can have many um, instances working with the same code. Once we have cloned this repo, and this is maybe the first step, you will see it right here. I see the same files and I also have my favorite editor loaded with this code. Now that I have this repo clone, you should try to log into the Hero with the Heroku tool belt and then you will just be free and good to go. Our next steps then is going to be to create the actual application and try to see it running. So the first thing that I'm going to do from my code, we have my code clone here, is doing Heroku create 
and I'm going to change to choose a name that I want. For example, uh, Flask Tutorial Heroku. This name needs to be unique, so there might be some times that the name is already taken, you will have to use a different one. Uh, you can also leave it without a name and Heroku will assign one randomly for you, like the ones you see right here. So now I have a URL generated and I can access it and you will see that my application is already running. Of course, that it's empty. It's a placeholder that Heroku has, but it's already running and working. And of course, what I wanna do now is deploy my code to this particular app. So will we, keep, we will keep following our steps. And the things you will see here are pretty interesting. Whenever we deploy something to Heroku, we'll be using Heroku plus Git, the traditional Git interface. And that's why you see this other URL generated right here. If I check the remotes that I have in this particular uh, repo, you will see that aside from origin, the, or the one, the original uh, remote that we always have in our Git repository, I also have now a Heroku remote, a new one, that basically points to the Heroku server. So what I'm going to do is I will be pushing code to Heroku and that code will be automatically be deployed by Heroku. So let me show you an example. The first thing that I'm going to do is to show you the app, app the Flask application that I have built. I am going to simplify this process a little bit so I don't work with the database yet. All right, so we're going to go back to our traditional hello world application. So I am going to command this out from now and I'm going to just command these lines and I'm just going to do return hello world. So you see that it's actually running. Now that I have the changes in my repo, I'm going to check them out. I'm going to, of course, commit, add and commit them. I'm going to do something like simplified version of our app as regular commit message. And I'm going to push it to Heroku. So I'm going to do git push Heroku master. All right, so step one, you install the Heroku tool build you logged in, you created your application, and now our third, fourth step is just pushing to Heroku. When I push to Heroku, I will be sending all my code plus a set of additional instructions on how to, create, how to deploy and how to run our application that I'm going to show you in one second. But I want you to see this process. As you can see here, Heroku has taken our, our code. Everything seems to be working fine, very fine deploy done. And it's telling us that our application is already deployed in the cloud. So I will just access it and you will see here an application error. I'm going to show you in a second why that is happening. So the first step to understand why our application is failing, which can happen, is to, of course, try to interact with Heroku to see a better description of our error. There are two ways to do that, all right? What we're going to end up doing is consulting the logs generated by Heroku. The first one is by using just the dashboard, right? So the graphical interface. I will go to more and I will check the logs and I'm going to see all the logs in my application. There is another way using the tool belt and it will be just as simple as Heroku logs. And it will just print out all the logs for my application. If I check the logs carefully, it says that in WSGI file, it's trying to import the app, uh, the app module, and of course the app object from our app module, this one, and it's not being able to do so. So what I can see here is that the module can't, cannot be referenced. And that is usually uh, an issue related to the Python path. 
All right, so the, the, if I check the readme, the steps that I have right here, it's telling me that I have to configure or set the configuration for my particular Python path. So this will give us a chance to show you how to set configurations in our own Heroku application. Usually in our Heroku applications, we will set configuration by defining environment variables. So for example, the way we have to define our secret key for our application will be through the secret key environment variable. So what we're going to do is on the own development on our, on our own computer, we will have either a default variable or, or value that we want to use, or we can generate our own environment variable right here. But in Heroku in production, what we're going to do is of course give a different value to that variable and that will be protected and hidden and it's going to be secure. We will not have to deploy that in the Git repo. So for example, what I have to do here, I'm just going to get this particular piece of code, is set the environment variable python path equals to flask Heroku example. All right, so this directory Flask Heroku example will be now part of the Python path. So I'm going to do that, I'm running it, and you will see setting Python path and restarting the app. If I now show you from my apps, the environment variables by going to settings, and reveal config variables and I will see now my Python path variable set to the value that I had included before. So again, this is the way we're going to set the configuration for application in production. So these environment variables are important and of course it's important for you to keep them secret. All right, so for example, here we can store passwords to access our database. We can store, um, I don't know, credentials to access different services. It's important to keep them secret and secure. So now that I have set the Python path, I will go to this application and I will try to reload it. And hopefully, there you go, you see that it's working. So we have, for the first time in just how much? Five minutes, our first Flask application working. It's not working yet with the database, but it's already deployed in the cloud. Let's see how to make a quick change to this particular app. So the only thing that we're going to need to do is we will just change our application. Let's say um, this is a change. Now check flasktutorial.com. I'm going to save it. I'm going to commit and add it. And I'm going to push again to Heroku. That will be the way that I have to publish my changes to my Heroku app. So I will do git uh, push Heroku master. Heroku will take all our application again and we'll try to speed this process up. It will redeploy our app and we'll be able to see these changes. So fast forward, our application is already deployed. Everything seems to be working. I will just reload the app and it's showing our change. So again, to recap, we have created the app. We just need to push the code to Heroku using the Heroku tool belt and any new change that we want to publish, it will be just pushing it um, to the master or to the master branch in the Heroku remote, right? As simple as git Heroku git push Heroku master. Now, let's see how to connect the database uh, so we can interact with it using our uh, original application. To use the database, the first thing we're going to use and do, and I'm just following these, these steps here again for you to remember, is I will need to add the service of Postgres right, to my Heroku app. So I will go here to configure and add a new add-on and I will just look here for Postgres and I will choose Heroku Postgres. When you choose this option, you will be prompted with this um, model and it just tells you or lets you specify which service you want. Of course, I will just choose the free one, which is a tiny instance, right? A tiny database. And that is it. What is going to happen now is that our application on Heroku is going to have a new environment variable. I'm going to show it 
right here. Now I have this database URL. I haven't manually added it, but it was automatically added when I created or when I linked my Heroku app to the Postgres service. All right, so um, Heroku is creating this Postgres database and it's giving me and automatically setting this environment variable in my Heroku app. So now my application by using this environment variable can communicate with the database. All right, so it's as simple as that. What I want to do is I want to manually interact with this application without, sorry, with this database without having to deploy anything. All right, I want to have like administrative access to this application. I can just do that with this value, like copying it and using a different Postgres client like PC admin or any other. Um, but what we have here and we show you how is we can preload some schema to the database by using the command from Heroku tool belt PC PSQL. So I don't know if you are familiar with Postgres, but the way we communicate with Postgres in a traditional environment is, is with the PSQL command. All right, it's the Postgres interface interface we have uh, to communicate. In this case, we will just use this service to load our schema to uh, our database. By default, when we use Heroku PC PSQL, Heroku will take this database URL, URL to communicate with your database. It will remember what's the database you have created. So I'm going to just copy and run this command. It's connecting to the Postgres database and it has just creating, created, sorry, the databases, the, ta the tables that we have right here. So we have as our traditional class tutorial, three tables, right? And we are dropping and we are creating each one of these tables, country, author, and book. Now the next step, again, copying and pasting it, is just loading some initial data, again, as our class tutorial. So I'm going to show you the initial data first. We're going to load a set of countries and a couple of authors to our up. So I'm going to execute the same command again. Heroku is taking care of initializing everything. Um, it has created a couple of inserts, right? And now what I'm going to do is just go back to my previous version of the app to show you all how this particular app is working with Heroku. So here we have the before connect. We, if you don't understand this, please go to again, our free class tutorial is available. Uh, we are explaining all these in detail. In our main route, what we are doing, we are selecting everything from country, all right? We're selecting all the countries and then showing them in our index.html template, all right? Our index.html is just showing you some, part, some simple code. It's looping through the countries and just displaying the countries. It's not the brightest app. What we want to show you is how to interface with Postgres and deploy the app to Heroku. So now that I have created my changes, what I have to do is just again, commit and push to Heroku. I'm going to using database and I'm going to push to Heroku. Let me skip this and fast forward. Our app is launched. As you can see, everything worked. I will now show you two things. The first one, I will go back again to my overview and you will see the commits that I'm deploying. All right, that's the activity that is happening all the time. So for example, if I refresh here, you will see the last deployed commit. It was less than a minute ago and the commit hash, right? CFE, if I show you the log, you will see CFE328, it's the same hash. So again, this is the way Heroku has to keep our application synced. So now if I reload this page, we will hopefully see again our list of countries. This is again being pulled automatically by our, uh, by our application from the Postgres database. All right, so uh, this is pretty much it. I don't know how much we have spent here, but 10 minutes at most, and we, have, and we have already our application running. So again, to recap, the important thing here, and maybe the counterintuitive part, is that we are not dealing manually with any server. 
All right, we're just creating our application. When we create this application, we have this interface, right? We can see the logs, that's an important part, either with the graphical interface or with our Heroku tool belt, right? So I'm going to just Heroku logs. And you can interact with your application from the command line. So for example, I'm going to, again, get all the config variables, Heroku config, I get all the configuration variables from this particular app that I have just built. I can set, I can get config variables. And finally, when I want to deploy something new, I can just push code to that particular branch. As simple as that. Then our application is running right there in the cloud for us for free. If you ever need to do something different, this um, interface has a lot of information and if you go to settings you will find for example how to set your own domain so if you go to domain you can just set your own domain right here and if you go with the simple I think it's a seven box dyno you can get a free HTTPS certificate so you have a secure application so this has been pretty much it. It's a super simple process. Everything is detailed here. We encourage you to go and try it by yourself. And now you have your application working both with Flask, Python and Postgres out of the box. All right. So it's just a matter of how you are going to move from now on with your own app. But deployed is pretty much covered. So check our other resources, go to flasktutorial.com. You will see, uh, you will have their access to our free Flask tutorial. We're adding new extra content like this one all the time. So sign up, you will receive more. Uh, we're working on things like, for example, how to create APIs, contact forms, upload media, media, sorry. So just go there and check it out. If you have any questions, as usual, just write us questions at remoter.com. Have a great, great day and start working with your Heroku apps.